head to the shoreline for the sights and sounds of the unique wildlife that lives there. And no matter how small some of them may seem, they are a crucial part to gauging the health of our marshland. Every week, First Alert meteorologist Scott Gagliardi will be reporting on the climate and how climate change is impacting us here in the state. Tonight, he is live in Old Saybrook and introduces us to the salt marsh sparrow. And Scott, why is this bird so important when it comes to climate change? Yeah, that's right, Stephanie. So the salt marsh sparrow has been a bird that is scientists have referred to as the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. And it's because of where these birds place their nest just a few inches above the high tide line. But with high tide becoming higher, these birds have yet to adapt to the changes in sea level rise. If the nests are too high above the surrounding marsh grasses, predators can find them. And if they're too low, water fills the nest and takes the eggs with it. This is causing a rapid decline of their population. Birds will go extinct sometime between the mid-2030s and the mid 2060s. So, That's the timeline Chris uh, Elphick, uh, a biologist at the University of Connecticut, says is possible given current projections. Increasing research, preservation, and adaptation efforts are the only way to ensure the salt marsh sparrow's survival, but even that is slim. It's the only species of songbird that exclusively nests in the marshland here in Connecticut, and over 80% of their population have disappeared in recent years. This is leading experts to sound the alarm. It's not like you cut down all the forest and then there's no habitat. You know, there's still a marsh here, but the marsh is changing. Um, and given enough time, the marsh will disappear. You know, when, when these high tides come, even though the habitat is still there, it, it turns it from a marsh that is suitable for nesting into a marsh that is not suitable for nesting. But why this specific bird? Are others in the marsh dealing with similar timelines? I asked that to Stephanie Kuros at the Center for Biological Diversity at UConn, and she thinks there are several contributing factors. And many others that are also threatened by climate change and sea level rise. And it's really all part of this worsening wildlife extinction crisis of our own making. It is not alone, um, and we need to be doing everything we can to fight the extinction crisis because um, extinction is forever. And if we let these birds or any other species go extinct, that really represents a moral failure on our part. Development along our coastline has increased significantly, especially in recent years. And the slow but steady rise in sea level has caused these birds to have extremely limited access to their natural habitat. It is not too late, but we do need to act quickly. Now, the Center for Biological Diversity fired an endangered species petition with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in late April. And if approved, would expedite the process to get these birds saved along Connecticut's coastline. Live in Old Saybrook, Scott Egliardi, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right. very.